So I'm going to do these up real quick. Hopefully quick. Just to show you where things have come from. I've covered wiring in a few other models, but I figure it's always good to do it in any given one. The way you tell the negative pin on one of these LEDs, usually, is one is shorter. The shorter one is usually always negative. I give them a bit of a crimp, so if I'm just looking real quick around, I know exactly what's negative and can go from there. So here we go, negative to this one's positive. And these are all green I'm working with right now. I also want to make sure I get their heights similar. I don't want any disparity in the lighting later on. Now one thing I'll tell you up front is I'm a really sloppy wiring electrician kind of person. A really good guy could get these leads down to bare nubs and solder those. However, uh, I'm not so good at it. So I wind up with really long leads. I use far too much uh, heat shrink and solder. And things just take a lot more than they really need to. This soldering gun as opposed to an iron. If I had an iron around, I'd probably burn the house down just through uh, neglect. So this is only on when the trigger is pushed and it takes a few seconds to heat up. But of course the good thing is it's off as soon as you let go of the trigger. There's not a lot of point in trying to get it to solder before it's gotten to the heat level it needs. Usually you can tell because when the solder on the tip starts to smoke, that's when you're all set. The proper way to solder is to put your iron tip on one side and then solder the other and then that draws it through. However that takes a lot of extra time to heat up the source wire itself or getting a little smoke. So usually what I'll do is just, uh, eh, still not quite there yet. It's a delicate trigger, you really have to hold it down tight. Almost. Still waiting. I think I need to get a new one. This one's getting kind of old, I guess. The grip is kind of loose. I don't know if it's really uh, as strong as it used to be. Alright, we're getting a little bit here. There we go. Of course, the other reason why you want to solder properly is that if you leave your solder on the wire, it's suddenly connected. That's good. Now it's smoking. So if you do it this way, it just takes a few extra seconds. You don't really need a lot of solder, but I like to blob the stuff on. More security in my mind. But again, really the slightest dab of solder is really good enough to do the work for you. This is heat shrink. Comes in various widths, lengths. If you go to a place like Radio Shack, you're going to get uh, really done over hard on their prices. But if you, I buy it by the yard, and uh, it treats me pretty well. But if you can't buy it, find it by the yard, then you're really going to get screwed. I'm paying about a dollar per three foot long length. And I should really have more appropriate scissors here. Technically, you should trim your leads down to the smallest point possible, but. Uh, like I say, I'm kind of lazy about it and not very good. So, here we've got these three. I'll let gravity help me out here. So this stuff is called heat shrink because when you heat it, it shrinks. So this is a hot air gun, but it's essentially a hair dryer. Just a really powerful one. 
300, 500 degrees Celsius. Nice. So it gets hot. And you shouldn't have anything that's flammable behind whatever it is you're shooting. So I try to shoot up in the air. And it takes a few seconds for it to heat up properly. You can test the far ends of the heat shrink to see if it's going or not. So let's take a look and see if this circuit works. It better. Alright, so we got our three greens. So next one I'm going to do, remember the one with the crimp is always negative. So let's get a little bit of wire here. If you don't have a wire stripper, cutter, crimper, I definitely recommend you get one. Once you get used to handling it, it gets a lot faster. And a professional electrician would pull off exactly what they need. Tiny, they could pull a little millimeter off of that and get a good connection, but I'm not a professional and like I said, I'm not so good at it. And the other thing I'll say while I'm thinking of it is always be careful with electricity. Never let your guard down around it. Alright, so that should be good. And... Uh, one thing I'll say about the heat gun is that when you're using it around heat shrink, be careful to aim it away from the LED itself because what I have done even just on this very project last night was that the LED heated so much that the lead came out of it entirely. The plastic sealed behind and I couldn't get the lead back in again. So now we've got our positive and negative. We'll come over here to the gripper. and get the solder going again.